ladies, and welcome to The Beauty Shaman. So one of you, and I can't find where who it was. I would say your name. So please tell me who you are. Um, I, I didn't write it down. I can't find it on my comment section. Anyway, asked if I would do a video on how I curl my hair. Um, and also how it looks shiny. I think that was the same person. So I thought, okay, let's address it. Let's just do a whole video on this, okay? So today we're gonna learn how I do, how I curl my hair um, to have that kind of soft wave. It's a little bit of a beach wave, uh, maybe a little tidier than that. Um, just so that you can do it as well. Um, it doesn't take very long. It really is just a kind of a skill set. So that's what we're going to address today. And before we get started, please visit my website at thebeautyshaman.com. Use the code SB10 for 10% off everything in my store. And please hit the subscribe button and the bell to be alerted every single time I upload a video. Okay, let's get going. Okay, so I have my tea. Do you have your tea? Gotta have tea whenever you watch videos. I don't know about you, but I am a I am a tea drinker. I'm not really a connoisseur, but I'm definitely a drinker. So let's get a slurp and get going. Okay, so one trick I really want to share with you. I want to share some some definitely inside kind of tricks and secrets with all of you. One of them is that I use a lot of coconut oil on my hair. Now this doesn't work for everybody. I think if you have a lot of damaged ends. Um, a lot of that that just need to be cut off because everything after it leaves your the hair follicle here it dies so everything over here is dead so that's why the further down it gets sometimes the more frayed especially if you color treat your hair or um, if you live in a really dry climate like I do, or if you curl it a lot, you add heat a lot, or hair dryers, any of those things can really damage hair. Um, having said that, it can't always be avoided, right? Like I, this is me, oh natural, it's very boring. <laughs> so it's good, I mean, either I straighten it, or I curl it, or I do something when I work, or when I'm in front of a camera. So, um, so my hair does get very damaged, and you can see it's got some damage to it here. Um, so one of the keys to that is to get a lot of haircuts. Like I probably get a haircut every three to four weeks. My hair grows really fast. And that also helps keep the ends in good shape. Um, I use a very hydrating um, uh, cleanser on my hair, shampoo. I use Biolage, um, which is, you know, for me, that works fine. I know for some of you with more fine hair, that's way too, it doesn't work well. Like you need something much more enriching than that. Um, so really, you know, let me know what kind of shampoo you use and what you like. I'm, I'm not as well kind of, I'm not as knowledgeable on um shampoo brand. So I'd love to hear from you. But in any case, find one that's really nourishing and hydrating. But then I take coconut oil in the jar upstairs from the kitchen and I bring it and I put a bunch in my hand and I rub it through the ends like this. I really coat the ends. You don't need it up here, right? Because here's pretty hydrated. You put it on the ends, put it back, leave it for about 15, 20 minutes and then shampoo it out. I do this, I mean, maybe once a month, sometimes more if I'm curling my hair a lot more. It does make a difference. Um, now for some of you, it isn't. Some of you are gonna have to go towards a serum, something that's got a lot more nutrients in it that really does sink into the hair. And you know, I think to each his own, to what's gonna work for you, but I'm telling you what I do. Um, so you can give it a go and let me know your thoughts on it. Um, in any case, let's get on to curling. So what I do, I have my hairdresser, I have this great hairdresser in Boulder, Colorado, who's fantastic, her name is Megan. Um, but she, um, I get it so that it has a shape. So you can see, that I have some a little bit, you know, shorter ends here and longer down at the bottom. I get her to shape it. And then if I want it to be straight, I flat iron it, get it all one, but it's shaped so that I can curl it. Um, for those of you who don't like haircuts or get your hair cut every six months, this look will not probably hold on your hair because the longer and the less shape your hair has, the more the curls are not going to stay in your hair. It's just the nature of the beast, okay? You really need to have your hair shaped in the right way in order to hold this kind of curl. Um, and if you don't have a good hairdresser, you know, ask around, get somebody good and get a nice shape to it, okay? Um, so, all right, so let's talk about how we do these, these kind of curls. So what I do is you you basically need to section your hair. Now I have a ton of hair and I know that. And if you hate me, go ahead. You can tell me you hate me down below. Okay, so I've basically separated the crown of my head from everything down below. Then I take it in sections and the bigger the section, the bigger kind of separation you're gonna have. So I tend to take it in, um, in kind of medium sections. And the kind of curling iron you use, um, I mean, I use just, this is hot tools. Um, this is not expensive. You don't need an expensive curling iron. This is an inch. You can also do an inch and a half. 
that works really well. Um, just depends. You're going to have obviously a lot bigger waves if you do it that way. I think the longer your hair, the bigger you can go on um, curling iron just because then you, you know, it gets the nice full wave in there. Um, I use this one. I also use the inch and a half quite a bit. Um, in any case, we're going to use the inch today so you can really see um, the waves. You can also use smaller than an inch up to you. So what I do, okay, see I've got my little section here. I start up at the top. Now this just takes a little bit of practice and I weave it around. Now I've got my iron pretty hot here. If you have fine hair, have it less hot. And then I just gently pull it down so that the ends are soft. See that? So that the wave starts higher. If you do it, as I've seen many people do this, where you grab your section and then basically you put this at the end and then you roll it up. Um, and what that does is it makes all the curl to be down at the bottom as opposed to starting up in here. Now, again, you need the right haircut to be able to pull this off. But the way I do it is it has the curl here and then the ends are a little bit loose. This might even be too tight for me. Like I might want to loosen that up a little bit. The other trick is you go back and forth. So this one I turned this way. This one I'm going to turn the opposite way. Like that. Again, I hold it for a second just to get it so it really gets in there. And then I gently pull it down so that the ends are more loose. See? And I don't mind if my ends are a little bit straight. That doesn't bother me. I kind of like that look. But, you know, depends on you. So the pulling out really does take practice. And also trying to curl the back of your head takes a lot of practice. And I don't have that down. I get it all kind of wonky. I don't think it really matters. So again, I go here. And these little ends that fall out at the base, I don't really worry about. They don't show very much. If I'm making up, if I'm doing somebody else's hair, then I will be much more studious with those, but on my own, I don't really mind. Okay, so I'm gonna continue and go all the way around. Okay, so I've done this lower level here. Now I'm gonna take, let my hair out. Now, because I part my hair on the side, I've got a lot of hair over here. So what I do is I section this yet again. And you can actually do this even if you part it down the middle, if you have a lot of hair, just because that way you can really get more differentiation with your curl. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. All right. Then again, I do the exact same thing. And I tend to separate it a little bit more. I tend to want a little bit more separation closer to my face. So I get smaller chunks, I guess I should say. Again, same thing. And just pull the ends out. Right? Nice. Same thing. Okay, so I've done, you know, the lower level, I've done the mid level, and now I'm going to do the top just because I've got so much hair. And also this adds more, so it's not, so it's more broken up once you run your fingers through it, okay? I leave it, you gotta leave it once you curl it to let it, the heat cool down. So the hair is nice and cool. That way it will hold better. If you immediately run your fingers through it, it's gonna fall out. So I do this upper one, and as you can see, I'm grabbing a lot smaller chunks. Um, and I just like a little bit more of, because these ones are on the top, I like the waves to be a little smaller. So I'm just grabbing really small chunks. You can also use a smaller curling iron. That works as well, just to get those smaller waves. You can actually do all different size waves too on your hair. Um, when I do other people, a lot of times I'll pull out you know, about three different sizes of curling iron just because then it really gets a fun wave to it. It's really nice. Okay, so as this cools down, I want to share a couple things. A few of you might need to use product in your hair so that it holds curls. Some of you, especially if you have Asian hair, which is very much bigger and thicker and rounder than, than um, Caucasian hair, uh, it's not probably not going to hold as well. So I would say you're going to need to use some mousse or some sort of texturizing um, product in your hair to get it to stay. Um, the more damaged your hair is, the better it holds, which is sort of a 
weird thing. Like we don't want damaged hair, but we want it to hold the curl, but it doesn't always work that way. So I would say that also if you have African-American hair, black hair, um, it has to, you have to put it on a much higher heat um, in order to have it hold. It needs to be, um, may not need product, but it just needs to really be held for a lot longer. So, um, so it just depends on the hair, type of hair. I would also recommend getting some dry shampoo. This is the one I use. It's called Kenra. It's just a texturizing spray dry shampoo. Uh, one of my favorites is Ori Bay. I often talk about that. I'm actually out of stock on that right now, so I'm using my Kenra. But Kenra is actually a great product as well. And one of the things I like about this is, like right now I'm growing my bangs out, so right now they would be in my face. But I can pull them this way, and I can put a little dry shampoo on the ends. And what that does is it makes it obey me a little bit better. It's kind of like adding dirt to your hair without it looking like dirt. See, it kind of makes it obey because I want it to go to the side. And then also, if you want more oomph, right? Some of you, this is cooling down nicely. Some of you like feel like your hair is just sort of flat. Okay, obviously, not obvious, maybe it's not obvious, but you know, grab yourself a lovely teasing comb. Now, teasing hair, some of you hate that because it breaks your hair. You know, we can't win on every you know, at every point. But I do think this really does help. So, so say for example, I'll do this side because this one's still a little warm. Say I want a little bit more height right here. So I'll pull that, you add your spray, and then you back comb it. And you throw the comb. See, as you can see, that really does, that adds texture right there. And the more you do that, like look at that, look what that did. Isn't that cool? Now, my hair does, because it's fine, but it's thick, it does tend to hang down. Um, so sometimes, especially as it gets longer, I do this a lot more. But this does hold, by the way. Like, you do this, as long as you don't comb it out, it's going to stay. So, but look, how cool is that? I think the trick with a lot of these is don't comb your hair. Um, like, you know, you want to, like if you're a hair combing, you're always combing, it's going to comb things out. So, you know, get a lot more comfortable with just using your fingers like what I just did, like that. See, see how much that really worked. Oh, isn't that cool? Like, look at that. You can see how broken up that is. And if you want to add even more volume, just take your texturizing and just hit it kind of loosely. Now, you know, I got gobs of this stuff, hair. I mean, so I have to be a little careful how much of this I use. I can look like a, you know, remember Breck hair ads, like where the woman had like huge hair. It's back in the 80s. I'm dating myself. But in any case, I don't want to do that. But look how pretty that is. See, that just kind of has that nice, loose wave to it. And sometimes you got to pull them apart a little bit more. Like they just, they kind of want to stick together, right? Like birds of a feather. And as my bangs grow, you're going to see them do a little bit more of a curtain look, which is what I'm going for here. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I mean, these are just really easy tricks. Um, they do take practice. They do take time. It isn't like you're going to learn this overnight. But I do think, like anything else, um, the more you practice, the more you're going to be able to do these really beautiful, soft kind of beach waves, especially as summer is coming, um, which I love doing this in the summer. It just looks, you know, it's so nice and sassy and fun. So anyway, I hope it's helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. I always love to hear from you. And thank you so much for watching The Beauty Shaman.